Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome back to a new year of 2021. Uh, we have lab number 12. It's with the algae. And so you're introducing to uh, the next version, lab number 12, of the becoming famous David and Herman seventh grade science fair. Science Oh, good. No, we're good. Oh, eight. We're good. We're okay with that? Okay, sign. <laughs> and today we're very lucky. We have a special, a special guest. It's the new assistant principal of our campus and our school, Coach Luna, who you all know, and he's going to help us with our labs today <laughs> with the algae. All right. So let's get with it. I'm going to do this uh, data. Coach Luna, assistant principal, is going to do the graph. You have this graph on Google Classroom. And Dave is going to run the camera. Are you ready? Let's go. Let's hit it. Go science. Yeah. Okay. All right, students. So each one of you have four samples of these algae pellets. Remember, please don't let your brother or your sister or a dog or something chew these. They, they'll, they'll make them sick, okay? It's carbonic acid, and each one of these has little pellets, like little bubble desserts, but it's algae. And each one of those little bubbles has thousands and thousands of algae. Uh, the lecture we had the other day explains that algae can be single cell, euro, uh, euphoric animals like these, or they can be seaweed or kelp, very tall seaweed, and it's all considered algae. So what we've done here, and you do this at home, have a light source, any kind of light source. It can be outside. I mean, it can be the sunlight, Preferably not direct light, but you know, Mike's, what the heck, it might work out okay. I have placed these 10 centimeters from the light source, 10 centimeters away, and so we have sample number one, two, three, four. And our uh, uh, illustrious vice principal is going to record the data on the chart that you also have on your Google Classroom. So we're going to let these sit here for 10 minute increments. And from that, we're going to see which one produces the most oxygen. So as this pellet starts to, it'll start to produce oxygen, it'll kick into the photosynthetic, photosynthesis side of it, and the carbonic acid will start to turn blue. The one that's further away is not going to produce as much oxygen because it's further away from the light source. That make sense? Okay, the basic question here is why do your dogs and cats eat green grass when you get an upset stomach? And we're going to answer that. Kind of a crazy way, kind of off way. Also, if you guys see this stuff in the stores now, it's 9.5. Look at the graph, look at your chart, see where 9.5 is? That's pretty basic. That's Tums for your tummy. And so why do the dogs eat grass and green, green grass and when they get sick? All right? So we're going to give these 10 minutes, we'll come right back, and we're going to start documenting how much photosynthesis is going on based on the color of the carbonic acid, okay? I'll see you in 10 minutes. Hold up. So welcome back. It's been 10 minutes. Uh, Coach Luna is ready to record our first round of data under 10 minutes. So uh, sample number one is now at 7.4. Got it, Mr. Hilke. Good. Uh, sample number two is also at 7.4. Sample number two at 7.4. Check. Sample number three is also at 7.4. Sample number three at 7.4. Is there an echo in here? Yes. It's just me. <laughs> and then sample number four is also at 7.4. What? Okay, 7.4. <laughs> All right. So, uh, don't let people mess with your, uh, your lab. Make sure the light's in tent, and then we'll come back in 10 minutes. Cut for 10 minutes. Go. Okay. Yeah. Okay, action. Okay, so welcome back. We're now 20 minutes into our lab, and uh, sample number one is starting to show a little bit of uh, photosynthetic activity, and it's now at 7.8. Mr. Luna, please. 7.8 7 .8 for sample number one. Yes. Got it. Uh, sample number two is not doing anything. It's at 7.4 still. Sample number two is still at 7.4. Sample number three is still stuck at 7.4. Come on, sample number three. What's wrong with you? 
And sample number four, surprisingly, it's further away, but it's starting to change colors. So it's at 7.6. 7.6 for sample number four. Got it. Yes. Okay. So you look at the chart. You can see how we're adding in uh, each of the four samples as it works its way up. Hopefully, to the purple range of good quality photosynthesis, which means the dogs are going to eat it. Because they like that photosynthesis. <laughs> Alright, cut. We're back. Now we've had 30 minutes of intense photosynthesis. Number one. Number one is now at 86, 8.6, I'm sorry. Number one is 8.6. 8.6. Got and it. Number two is starting to pick up a bit, 7.8. Number two at 7.8. So it's starting to produce, it's starting to produce oxygen. It's changing the carbonic acid to the color chart on the little card. Uh, number three is at uh, 7.4, going nowhere. What's wrong with you, number three? Don't be mean. Okay, sorry. And number four is 7.8. Number four is 7.8. It's picking up there. Okay. It's further away, but it's turning colors. We got them all, Mr. Hilke. All right. So, come back in 10 minutes. Cut. Go. Oh. All right. So now we've had this lab going for 40 minutes. 40 minutes. And you should start to see a difference in the color. If you're not getting any color change at all, you probably need to get a brighter light or do the lab again in, out in the sunlight. You guys got it? The algae on top of the ocean is going to produce more oxygen than the algae down a couple of feet, down 10 feet. Make sense? And the, al and the leaves and the algae uh, towards the north and the south pole are going to produce less oxygen than the, the, the leaves and the algae at the equator. So we're on to minute 40. 40, we're ready. Number one, cranking it up to 8.8. .8. Moving on up. <laughs> there we go. Number two is holding in at 8.2. Okay, number two, 8.2. Got it. Uh, number three is at 7.6. It's finally woken up. Well, welcome to the party, number three. <laughs> and number four is 8.0. It's taken off, and it's way out here in left field. Whoa, number four. We all have right. them all. One, two, three, okay. four. Cut. We'll be back in ten minutes. Ready. Welcome back. This is our final round of, of tracking the four. And by now, you should see some color change, especially in one and two, because it's close to the light source. If not, it's no big deal. Set it up again. Okay, so number one. Number one is up to 9.0 on the acid base scale. Number one, 9.0. Doing really well. Uh, number two is 8.8, .8, doing quite well. Number two is right behind on its tail. Number three is at uh, 8.0. Wow, number three, good gain. And number four is at 7.8. So we could carry this out for another hour. If you want to, you can, because you can easily reset it, try a different light intensity, a different type of a light, uh, but it should be the same. Uh, and the closer to the light source, the more photosynthesis, more of a base, and less. So, uh, Assistant Principal Luna is going to connect the dots. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use red for number one. So, as we see number one, Increase. What's your uh, Oops, your cuff? Sorry there. about that. <laughs> sorry guys, my lab coat, my mad scientist lab coat got in the way. <laughs> you know a fly will do the same thing. Sometimes flies run into that because it's warm. <coughs> All right. It causes. For, for number two, I'm going to use blue. Number two. Let me roll my mad scientist sleeve up. How does that look, Mr. Hilke? Good job. Okay. Good job. Number three, I'm going to use, oh, just kidding. I'm going to use a dotted red line for number three. Dotted red line. Don't try this at home, kids. It takes a trained professional. 
Dotted okay. red line for number three. Yep. And finally, number four, I'm going to use a dotted blue line. You can use a black line. Okay. You're the boss, Mr. Hilke. We're going to use a black line for number four. Here we go. Four, four, four. <gasps> it went down. Okay. Ta-da! Excellent, excellent. So your graph should look different than my graph. Your graph is a different graph than our graph. And I'd like you to do the graph, um, attach it to Google Classroom, and send it into this. You all know how to attach things now. Okay? And uh, if you want to redo this, that's what's really good about these uh, little pellets, is you can redo the lab over and over and over. All right? Very good. Thank you. Good help. Hey, I'm just going to let him go ahead, you know, first. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys. Okay, it's a wrap. It's a wrap.